Okay, let's start with our prelude. Well, actually, I, I, I'm going to do the welcome first, and because I'm going to lead into it. So, good morning and welcome to UCB. A church that strives to follow the teachings and examples of Jesus. Thus, we are called to radically welcome, unconditionally love, include the unincluded, and in short, be a beloved community. So the next song is for everyone to sing. Fei Ying, our very talented pianist, has recorded a brief introduction and welcome before the song begins. We're so fortunate to have her. She is a, a real treasure, and I look forward to the time when you can all get to know her more personally. She just is a ray of sunshine in the room when, when she's here. Um, be sure your mic is muted, but please sing along with spirit and joy. We can't all be unmiked when we uh, uh, unmuted when we sing together because we'll make chaos. But <clears throat> I will lead. But please, I'll be checking to see if I see mouths moving. <laughs> so let me screen share this. I hope I did that. Hello everyone, I'm Pei Yin. Yeah. Haven't seen everyone for so long. Hope can that you hear? come soon so we can meet in person. Uh, today I'm going to play I'm gonna live so God can use me. And before that, I will say briefly a second that uh, I have been playing music all my life and believe that music can be an outlet of great joy. And music is a letter for the soul and it lifts us up onto the rhyme uh, on high and help us celebrate our love of God. Dunlop. All right. Can you hear us? Yep. There we go. You're on. All right. Okay. So children's conversation, huh? Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. So about today is um, how us kids can help each other right now. So I was thinking about the Martinez family kids and how much they've been helping other kids going to school this week in the past few weeks by shoving backpacks for us to bless last week. And, and I thought maybe we could all maybe, um, sorry, uh, take their example and help each other as we go into the first few weeks of school right now. So I've got a few ideas about how we can help other kids. Um, for one thing, we can 
we can help kids study, maybe, if online learning is getting hard for our classmates. I know I'm planning on finding a study group when I get into school on Monday at RCC. So I think it might be a great idea for some of us kids to, to group together and help people that don't necessarily get some subjects. That's one thing we can do. Um, we can help, um, we can help other kids with food or maybe just talk on the phone with each other and remind ourselves that we're not alone right now. Um, so that's another way. I just, I think, um, I think we can afford to do a lot to help other people in our classes and in our areas. And um, I have a quote, I think. Oh, it, yeah, um, so it's by, Sorry, I lost the quote. But what I think is, is it was just if it was, if we want to live ourselves up, then we need to lift others up first. So I think that's the deal that we should think about in this week. Thank you, Ruth. That is a great lead in to our scripture. Just do one more little technical thing here. Or not. Okay. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Me. All right. I uh, canceled the spotlight on the Darcy family, but it's still there. <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to move right along, and we will look at the lovely and talented Dunlops while we do so. <laughs> Here we go. No, I think I found it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, I want to read our scripture this morning. It comes from uh, the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter or encourager in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. So I lucked out having that as our lectionary reading today. It's one of my favorite passages. I usually uh, bring it out around stewardship time, talking about how we each have gifts to give and how we each play a different role in God's plans for our world. But I almost left off that first verse because it wigs me out a little bit thinking about let your lives be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. That, I feel like that could go 
really bad if taken taken in the wrong way. Um, so I kind of like this version uh, from the Message Bible. Now, the Message is not a translation. It's a paraphrase. But um, I like how they paraphrased the first two uh, uh, verses of this passage. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life. And place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for God. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what God wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you develops well-formed maturity in you. And so here we have, you know, the advice on how to make our lives a sacrifice to God, an offering to God, is just to live our lives. Um, and the, the further verses talk about the different gifts that people have. And so, you know, you're living your life. You're a teacher. How can you offer your life to God? Teach. How can you make the world a better place? Teach. What is, you know, how can you bring God's purpose to fruition in this world? Teach. And we're not all teachers. Um, and the good news is we don't all have to be, right? So, um, you know, if, 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 a uh, being a minister is your thing, you know, caring for others, talking with others who, you know, are, are in crisis. If that's your thing, go do that, you know. Uh, if encouraging people is your thing, if you like to give people a kind word uh, to, to strangers you meet in the store, do that, you know. That's your gift. Do that. And don't feel like you have to do all of the jobs yourself. Um, I know this is time of isolation. I've been feeling super unproductive. And um, I definitely myself struggle with, you know, trying to be all things to all people. And there's all these problems in the world. And, you know, how can I help solve them all and that kind of thing. And this passage really gives me peace. Because it tells me that God wants me to follow my desires my passions, what is it that, you know, excites me and drives me and I feel like I just have to do. God wants me to follow that. And God wants us to follow that. Whatever is exciting to us, what is our drive, what's our desire, what do we feel like we just have to do? Um, that's the things that, that give us a clue of what it is that God wants us to do in our lives. Now, we have a great example uh, at our church of someone who has followed her passion her entire life, and that is our own crafty nurse, Donna. Uh, Donna, his uh, camp has been an important part of Donna's life since she was very young. And she, uh, as she explains it to me, she, one of the drivers for her going into nursing was so she could be camp nurse. So it's always been something near and dear to her heart and uh, something that she continues to work with and towards that ministry to this day. This year's camp was a little bit different. So uh, we asked Donna to make a little video talking about how they had summer camp at the, Mar at the Yamas Martinez house this summer. <coughs> I'll let Lynn start that up. Boys and girls, since we were unable to have summer camp on the mountain, we did camp at home and camp in the box. Although we missed being together at home at Pines, we had a good time um, doing camp via Zoom using camp in a box. 200 boxes were used this summer. I did camp in a box with Don Soleil and Bella Martinez. We started. Well, I'm Martinez, you! Yeah, you are! And I said your name. Okay, 
I did. Okay. We started camp in the backyard and moved inside when the weather became too hot. We opened the songs from the songbook. Then we had a discussion time, snacks, and crafts. We planted seeds in our individual garden containers. We made wood frames, uh, wind frames, picture frames, light jars, among other activities. We had devotion time each day. And we also started our camp with making our tree cookies and making rules for the week. Tree cookies are used for learning for us. I don't have a cookie. You had that thing you wore around your neck? And it had your name on it? Remember you had a thing with your name on it? That's called a tree cookie. And I don't know where it is. But you did have it for camp. Tree cookies are used for learning campers' names and that they belong at camp. We had our own camp shirts and we toasted often with our water bottles. Soleil wrote a lanyard and started a camp diary. Soleil was a big help with Project the Camp. Okay, Soleil, what did you like about camp? Anything over? Anything else? John, what did you like about camp? Uh, eating cookies. Okay. And what about coloring with the markers, all those pictures and airplanes? I have blue and yellow, black, white, brown. Okay, and you made little airplanes. And I, and I, and I, and I have a paper too. And you made a picture frame. And a wind frame. And my desk. Okay, Bella, what did you like about camp? Everything. You like everything. And everything too. I think you like singing the best. And I like everything too. You like everything also. Okay. Um, and I love my jacket. Please, okay, what I'm going to do in the newsletter, I'm going to put some more things about camp. So please, everybody, read and the Pilgrim Pines article in the next month's newsletter. Camp committees are busy coming up with ways to keep camp alive. Please support the camp so we can stay open and continue to touch every other people's lives. Okay. Thank you, Donna, for keeping camp alive this summer. <laughs> And thank you to the kids. They are just so adorable. Um, something else I want to say about following our passion and our desires and, and reaching out and doing something, anything uh, that, that we would, that comes to our mind to uh, help make this world a better place. And that is that United Church of the Valley is here to partner with you. We say yes. The default answer is yes. If you want to start a ministry, the default answer is yes. But just understand, it's if you want to start a ministry. Uh, where you don't always say yes when people say, I think the church should do. Uh, because the church is us, and it's up to us to do. And so if you come with the ministry idea, know that we will say yes. Uh, one example of that that I wanted to share this morning was um, Kira Eddy having the idea to do an online at home camp. You know, she saw a need. She saw that kids were gonna be stuck in their houses, not doing anything, can't go to the YMCA camps, can't do any of the school summer camps, can't go to Pilgrim Pines and those kind of things. Um, and she wanted to give them something meaningful to, to pass the time and also to have that camp experience and that camp community. So she came to me, I can't remember if it was May or, or, or the early June, and says, you know, I want to do this camp online. Uh, you know, you think that the, the church would su support that. And um, I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> Sounds pretty ambitious, Kira. 
well, you know, I've already got all these teachers who, uh, who want, want to do this, so I've got them all lined up. And I thought, well, wow, that's a big part of it. Okay, go on. Um, and then she told me how she was getting the word out through schools um, and through just word of mouth and different things. Um, and I thought, well, wow, that's another really huge part is how are we going to get kids to attend? But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you want to pull off a camp starting the beginning of July in like three or four weeks, you want to pull this together. I'm thinking there's no way. There's absolutely no way. But we're the church that says yes. So I was like, absolutely, you should do this. You know, talk to Sherry and our outreach uh, committee chair and, and let her know what you're thinking and, uh, and just go for it. Just keep doing whatever the next right step is and see how things come along. And she did that. Um, and after she got all the, the, the Zoom situation settled out, she worked with Rick and, and she and Rick put together this great uh, website on, uh, off of our website, this great page where there were forms and the kids could register and the registration started coming in. But it was a little slow going. Uh, we had about, about a week into registration, we had maybe 20 kids. And we thought, oh gosh, that's kind of a, 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 low, a low number. So uh, Kira reached out to the local online press in our area. And so I uh, was told that she could advertise for free for a week, registration for this camp. And so she did that. And we got 62 kids registered. That tells me that Kira was right. There was a need in the community. God was leading her to do this, to fill this need and making sure all the pieces and parts came together. She didn't have to do it on her own. She had a lot of help. Um, and so everything just came, just coalesced. And while not all 62 kids showed up, because when you offer something for free, not everybody ends up taking advantage of it. Uh, we did have a lot of kids and they were regular and they were at every session twice a week for three weeks. And it was a really good thing. And it did provide camp for a number of kids. And so that's the success story. And that's what I think we can do with whatever passion we have. Um, whether it be in your regular nine to five job, whether it be how you interact with people or whether you have a big idea for a ministry, we can touch others just by following where we think God is leading us. One other way that we can help is to uh, continue with our tithes and offerings to the church. And again, if you're struggling, we have a fund to help folks who are having, you know, suffering from this downturn in the economy. Um, but if you're not, thank you so much for continuing to provide your tithes and offerings. You are keeping this church going in this crazy time. If you would like to donate, I invite you to go to the donate tab on our website. Our website is ucvchurch.org. And there you'll see our address where you can mail a check or you could use Venmo or PayPal to uh, donate online. We are called to be the good in the world. I wore my, this t-shirt. I don't know if I can show it to you. It's one of my favorites. It doesn't show up very good on the screen, but it says, believe there is good in the world and the be in the and the and good are highlighted so that we know we are supposed to be the good in the world. And each of us has that ability, that gift, and that call. Amen. Now let's sing with the um, Yamas Martinez kids. They're going to share a camp song with us. Peace like a river, I got peace 
like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. In my soul. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. In my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. In my soul. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. In my soul. Okay, ready? I've got joy, joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. In my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. In my soul. Okay, well, all three. I've got peace like a river. I've got love like an ocean. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. In my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got love like an ocean. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. In my soul. Peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. In my soul. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river. I got peace like a river in my soul. That was great so much. <laughs> Now is our time for joys and concerns, I think. It is. Good morning. Today we get to share the joys and concerns we have on our hearts live and in person. We will do this by raising our hands for the camera so that we can see you and call on you to speak. In a word or two, let us offer our thanksgiving and gratitude our prayers for those we love within our community and prayers for our world and all of its people. We will complete our prayers of the people time with a period of holy silence and then a prayer. When I say together we pray, we will respond with hear us, O God. I'm going to start. We have a wonderful joy here at the Hayden household. Uh, my grandson Lucas is here visiting and will be with us until the end of the month. Uh, each time we get to visit with our kids or the grandkids, it's just a just a joy. So that's my joy. Do we have Holly? So I'm going to try and hold up a picture here if you all can see. Um, I got to see Ben on Friday. He's doing so well. What a joy. And here he is with his quilt. Can you all see that? I hope you can see it. He's doing so yeah. well. He looks like a whole different person, <laughs> but he is so grateful and he's getting stronger every day. He no longer has a hospital bed, no more walker, no more wheelchair. He's going to test out driving with his brother, I think, today to see if he can drive again. Um, he's doing very, very well. So the prayers, continued prayers, have been incredible. We, he realizes how blessed he is. And um, it's just been it. We've had some really fantastic conversations regarding his physical health, mental health, just the recovery process. And he's doing well. So thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your prayers. Anybody else? Just raise your hand. Donna. Donna, you're muted. Donna, you're frozen. Well, while Donna's unfreezing, uh, Catherine. 
You're muted. I was frozen there for a second. Did you get it? Yeah. Um, you know what? I've had, it's been the first, we were through the first whole first week, full week of uh, virtual learning. And there have been bumps in the road to say the least. But uh, from my experience, I want to give thanks for the parents in my classroom that they have been so kind and gentle. And the kids, every time I, I learn something, Nita says, yes, same for her. Mm -hmm. um, they cheered me on when I tried to do a screen share and show a video. And I got them to say, you know, don't give up, Mrs. Barnett, don't give up. And so um, I just want to um, offer up a, a thank you for that. Thank you. Donna, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. There you go. I it went back. Okay. Um, I want to first with my sister. I, a few you know, I went over to Las Vegas to be with her, and it, it's really hard to be. She's, she's in so much pain. She had knee surgery, and she had complications. She can barely walk. It did something to her foot and leg that she doesn't have total control, and, and all the feeling to her leg on the side that you know, he had to. And so keep her in your prayers. And I want to say thank you to Ann and all the other people that were getting in our, our prayer and square quilt group. Because I can call them and get uplifting from them because I'm getting depressed in, in this heat and being by myself. And, and um, so this group is really helping me um, get in better spirits is all I can say. We are doing a boutique, so if any of you have um, stuff, you know, that you want to um, sell to help raise money for the church, let Ann know. Uh, Oops. Uh, Donna, you got you muted yourself. Were you done? Does anybody else have a joy or concern? And I can only see the people that have their video screen up. So if we have folks Eric? that are on. Now let me check. There's Darcy. Darcy, you had one? I, well, I was thinking of a couple of things. One is um, up north and all of the fires that are going on. And particularly my friend Leah is up there trying to help her mom move. It's not because they needed to evacuate, but she was just going to move. And she said it was so terrible even trying to get a truck and everybody's evacuating and she's got asthma. It's so hard on her to breathe. And, um, so just really prayers for that family as they're trying to get out of there. Um, so her name is Leah. And the other thing is I want to remember to keep on our hearts, Nicaragua and the water. So here's our, here's our, um, bottles so far. So I'm hoping that uh, other people are also collecting their money and um, we'll be able to send some money off to them. That's all. Thanks, Darcy. Anybody else? Carrie? You good? No? Donna, you need to unmute, please. I don't see anyone. I don't know where Irene is, but um, here's a report on Irene's family. William's going to have surgery on his, on him for his little problems in his neck and stuff, um, whatever, um, down in San Diego on Thursday. Um, Donnie has hepatitis, so they're working on that, and he had his eyes tested, and he can't see very well at all. He's going to get glasses. Um, so keep them in your prayers and her father is doing better I think the tumor is shrinking and he's doing better and that's a report on the Irene, Irene and Rosie of Sam thanks Donna and how's Sue Berry doing no one said anything about Sue Berry and the food train Sandy you want to give that update I just spoke with Sue uh, the other day. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I just spoke with Sue. She she called to she called to thank me for bringing a meal, and um, I was amazed. I'm absolutely amazed. Uh, 
she's she's back uh and and we had a great conversation and um she's as as uh, witty and articulate as ever and uh i i know her her son helped her make the phone call. I'm not sure, you know, he, he actually called me and, and said, hey, I've got my mom, Sue, she wants to talk to you. So I'm not sure, you know, how much assistance she needed, but in terms of the conversation, it was great. That's all. Great, thanks, Jamie. Well, if, we're, if no one else, then uh, let's, uh, let's join together in a moment of holy silence. No matter how we understand prayer, we find that it is good to pray. Together we hold these names and words and spirit of prayer, a spirit of joy, a spirit of concern, a spirit of connection. For all these words shared today, and for all the words left unspoken, for all these, together we pray, hear us, O oh God. And now in one voice, please join in the prayer that Jesus told his disciples in your most in your most familiar words our beloved who is in heaven, heaven. hallowed heaven. be in your name your, your kingdom, kingdom come heaven. your will be done on heaven. earth as in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive heaven. us our debts as we heaven. our debtors and lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen Uh, Sandy is, uh, I think Sandy's frozen. Lynn, do you want to take it? Right, and who's Sandy? And I couldn't hear. There you go. Oh, okay. Hey, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm having great problems with my internet at home. So, let me actually. Wait one second. Sorry about that, gang. Um, are we good now with the internet connection? Just because I've done this so much this week, if if we're having troubles, it really helps if everybody turns off their cameras. I don't know, like, this is my first time on a school Zoom, on a t uh, church Zoom call, but, you know, so uh, Sandy and Lynn, I don't know if, if you feel like that's something you want to suggest or not. It's just something that I found is helpful. <laughs> Yeah, that can definitely help. Honestly, this is our personal internet troubles. I don't know what it is about this house <laughs> that doesn't allow the signal to travel through, uh, even with a booster. So I apologize for that. But no, um, I mean, and I always tell my students, it might be my internet, it might be your internet, it might be the combination. <laughs> so anyways, okay, I'm going to mute myself now. Back to church. Thank you for that tip. I appreciate it. Oh, what I was going to say was I want to change my view of your lovely faces um, so that I can see it in gallery mode. Because for me, communion is not only communion with God, but communion with God as resides within you and brings us together as a community. And I believe that was Jesus' intention when he instituted this meal with his followers. He wanted to give them a way to always feel connected to him and to renew their connection with one another. And so we gather around this virtual table. Uh, hopefully we each have our own communion elements. Um, 
I have got a Pop-Tart this morning. So I'm going to be blessing my sacred Pop-Tart here. Um, but whatever you have on hand, if you have a, a little morsel of food or a little drink or just one or both or neither, uh, we invite you to join with us in communion right now. You know, it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed um, when he knew that his time on earth was short, that he instituted this meal with his friends. He wanted to be around the table with those closest to, them, to him. And during that meal, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. This is me giving my body everything that I am to you. And then likewise, he took the cup, their shared communal cup, and he blessed it. And he offered it to them saying, take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant. He also mentioned it was the cup of his blood poured out for them. And I believe he meant in that instance that giving his everything, his very essence, because they believed the soul was in the blood. His very essence, his soul, is given to them as we drink this cup together. And every time we drink of it, we remember Jesus. So I invite you to take your elements. Will you join me in prayer? Loving God, we are so grateful that you are among us and always with us. Draw us closer to you and to one another as we share this spiritual meal together. Amen. Lynn, do we want to do our alleluias and then benediction? That's, I think so. Mm -hmm. So let's sing together alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Unmute it, would help to un it would help to unmute for the benediction. <laughs> <laughs> As we end our time together, let us remember that we are all still a part of one another, even in our absence. That God is in our midst and that each of us has a part to play in making this world a better place. So go forth and do. Amen. Amen. Amen.